this is not a bad thing. It is an opportunity to go deeper with your practice, to really use the yoga philosophy as a way to self-heal. Ignite your best life. Yoga is the spark. Hello and welcome back to the Yoga Hacks podcast. I don't know if it's the time of year or what is going on, but I just feel like everyone is sick. Everyone's sick in our Facebook group. Everyone's sick and uplifted. I am here to give you some tips on how you can do yoga when you are not only sick, but maybe when you've had a really debilitating injury, like you've broken your ankle or you've broken your wrist, because I've seen a lot of posts about that recently as well. So my big message for you is that injuries happen to all of us. You are not alone. Just like you go through periods of your life, or if you're a woman, periods of the month where you're maybe feeling better or maybe feeling not as great, in the long road, the bird's eye view of your life, like you're going to at some point go through an injury that's going to prevent you from doing the traditional yoga practice that you're used to. And this is not a bad thing. It is an opportunity to go deeper with your practice, to really use the yoga philosophy as a way to self-heal and stay positive. So I want you to wipe out that mindset that uh, this is... That, that your injury means you can't get on your mat because it can. I don't care what kind of injury you have. I don't care if you're in the hospital in a full body cast. You may not be able to get on your mat in the traditional sense that you're used to, but you can do yoga. And that's what I'm going to go over in this podcast. I'll also be sharing a personal story about how an injury I had actually turned out to be a huge blessing in disguise when it came to my yoga practice. So if you are injured just a little bit or feeling under the weather, you can always revert to a yin or restorative practice, which isn't as aggressive and doesn't often put pressure on your wrists or your feet the same way that traditional vinyasa yoga does. So pending your injury, look up some of my yin classes on YouTube and definitely check out a yoga nidra class I have. Yoga nidra is literally just a form of deep yogic sleep. And all you have to do in order to do the class is lie there. So you literally could be in a full body cast and still do yoga nidra and receive the benefits. So it's a great time to explore some Again, more yin style practices that you might otherwise never slow down and do. In addition, kundalini yoga, which some of you may or may not be familiar with, but I have some kundalini yoga classes on my YouTube and I will link them uh, below so you can try them. But a lot of kundalini yoga practices just involve all seated movements. So no downward dog, no putting pressure on ankles or wrists. So many kundalini movements like Sufi grind and breath of fire can be completely done seated. So if you again are in like the bro broken ankle or wrist um, camp, kundalini is also going to be a great place for you to explore. So get excited because yin restorative yoga nidra and kundalini we just often overlook these in our day-to-day -day life or we don't prioritize them as much as we perhaps do a vinyasa practice. And these practices have crazy huge benefits that are waiting for you. So if you can sit upright, there are kundalini classes out there that can work for you. Traditional meditation, in addition to kundalini, is going to be great to practice when you're sick because you can't move. Now traditional meditation is really hard if you have a stuffed up nose like a cold or a flu. So if you're in the cold or flu or head cold camp, check out a video I have on YouTube that's specifically developed for the cold and flu. And I think it has that exact title yoga for cold flu and sinuses or something like that because it's really going to help clear out your nasal passage. But assuming you're just injured um, but can breathe appropriately, Pranayama and meditation, and pranayama for those of you that don't know just means breathing techniques, are so insanely powerful. If you're in Uplifted, Erica Jago, my dear friend and fellow teacher, teaches a phenomenal 30-minute breathing exercise, and you feel so grounded and like you've been transported to another planet after doing it. And I, on YouTube as well, have tons of meditations that involve either alternate nostril breathing 
or Breath of Fire at the beginning, and all of those are in the meditation playlist on YouTube. So again, it's not like your yoga practice ends. You're just going to be almost receiving with your injury this beautiful invitation to go deeper into some of the subtler aspects of the practice. And by subtle, I mean, you know, instead of doing sun salutations, you're maybe going really deep into alternate nostril breathing, or you're maybe going really deep into yoga nidra, this yogic sleep. Check out that video on YouTube of mine if you are kind of not able to be mobile right now. They say that 20 minutes of yoga nidra is equivalent to four hours of sleep. So if you do the yoga nidra tape, it actually could potentially speed up your healing and for sure it's gonna make you more calm and grounded. So yin restorative, meditation, pranayama, kundalini are all the options that are available to you when you are sick and injured. And I now will share my personal story, which is when I sprained my wrist the week before my wedding, a couple days before my wedding, and I had flown a yoga teacher who I love to be with me throughout my whole wedding so we could practice intensively together every morning because I was very focused on my energy throughout the week of my wedding and I wanted to be really on top of the energetic field that I was putting out to all my closest family and friends who had traveled so far to be with me. I wanted to be super radiant and calm as all brides do. So I was of course devastated when I found out that my wrist was sprained, (laughs) I fell off my bike, and that I wouldn't be able to do this traditional vinyasa practice that I had visualized doing with my teacher the whole week of my wedding and on my wedding day. However, instead, I did exactly like I'm suggesting to you in this podcast, I did kundalini yoga because kundalini doesn't put pressure on the wrist and I really amped up my pranayama and meditation time because I had that extra time. And everyone at my wedding told me that my energy was just so great and even some energy workers and body workers, like people who specialize in this stuff, just told me like whatever you're practicing or doing right now keep doing it because you're magnetic and I think the kundalini yoga was so powerful and strong and not what I normally practice that it's actually what I really needed during that week of my wedding but because it's not like my natural favorite go-to I never would have done it unless I had had the injury and that's where the injury was a huge huge gift because it made me do the kundalini that's a little harder for me during my wedding, but that's exactly what I needed. And I had a lot of breakthroughs during that week. Similarly, if you are a teacher, a yoga teacher, or even if you're not a yoga teacher, injuries are such a gift in that they give us more compassion for others. So some of the best teachers out there have had really difficult injuries and they turn that injury into a strength in their teaching and how they relate to their students because guess what a lot of your students if you're a yoga teacher are going to have injuries are going to be struggling at different points of time with either wrist pain or same as you perhaps broken arm or sprained ankle and you having been through that is going to be incredibly powerful in the sense that you're going to be able to relate to what they're going through so much more and maybe develop and create your own exercises. Those of you who are doing YTT with me, you know you de- we develop your own signature meditation and you can develop your own signature therapeutic movements for certain injuries. If you've been through an injury yourself and you really know what it's like, you should create around that. Use it as a source and a fountain of inspiration so you can share that knowledge with others. So it's my great, great hope that this podcast really lifts you up. And my last tip is just to remember that nothing is permanent. Change is constant. Those of you that did Chakra Challenge with me, right? This is Chakra 2. Everything is fluid and always changing. So even in the very difficult moments of whatever injury or sickness you're dealing with right now, you have to take that bird's eye view and keep the bigger picture in mind that nothing is permanent. You will get better. This phase that you're going through will pass. This injury will pass and you'll be stronger for it. Nothing is permanent. So just keep that in mind if you ever feel discouraged. 
I would love to see you in our community private group on Facebook. You can get there and join at yogahackshackscommunity.com. And it's just the greatest resource for everything having to do with your home practice, bringing yoga into your daily life. And of course, I would love to welcome you as a member in Uplifted, my kind of premium community for people who are really dedicated to bringing their home practice to a next level with my mentorship and help and support of other like-minded yogis. It's such an incredible group of people and there's tons of access to bonus content and so, so many cool things. So check that out at upliftedyoga.com. I'm so glad to have you here as a listener. Thank you so much and I hope you feel better soon. From my heart to yours, namaste.